Costa is Australia's uh, largest horticultural group with annual sales of around 900 million and we have a very strong growth base so that'll be expected, that'll be growing probably at 15% a year for the next uh, number of years. Now it almost wasn't so. We embarked on a transformative journey about six years ago when our chairman Frank Costa set up an independent board to oversee the group. And uh, previously the company was in uh, 14 different categories, a, a wide range of activities, a very uncertain strategy, uh, an opportunistic approach to growth, very poor lack of process. In fact, I categorised it by having management and capital splatter. We didn't really know what we were, we were in and why we were in it. We had some excellent categories and a lot where we were just pursuing profitless prosperity. And we also had a lot of good people with excellent cultural values but no high performance culture. So there were three steps in the transformation. Step one was to, pretty good idea, to adopt a new business model. We decided, um, and this is where the wholesale market structure was eroding and the retailers were becoming very strong and uh, of course are very dominant. So we decided we had to get very deeply entrenched in production and we had to be an integrated farmer, packer and marketer. So our model is to be an integrated uh, business, farming packaging, packaging and uh, marketing to capture as much as we could of the supply chain. We narrowed our focus down to a discrete range of attractive categories and then bulked that up to become number one in the country in, in those categories. Scale is very important to us. It gives us low cost uh, manufacture, low cost production and very importantly a base for R&D development. And also part of our mantra, and I'll try to develop this as we go through, was to reduce the uh, very big volatility which is characteristic of Australian agriculture and to move to protected cropping where we could and how we could. And also very importantly to add to our value set was to develop intellectual property, whether it's processed or varietal, in terms of our own IP or exclusive IP we gain from other sources externally. And we also redesigned our whole business and capabilities to be very much geared to the retail model with the aim of being the number one supplier to each retailer, which we are. Secondly, uh, to achieve that we had to overhaul our personnel. Uh, and uh, in our first uh, 18 months of that, about two thirds of our uh, management and leadership team were renewed. It's a, that's a polite way of saying we had to move some people on. Um, so the professional leadership uh, executive team was installed and our individual management unit teams were reviewed and uh, upgraded. We introduced strong operating disciplines and a sense of urgency and I'm, five years later I'm still saying we are getting there in the sense of urgency. We're almost there but not quite. But very importantly the company had a lot of very good family values and I'm proud to say that we have retained those and exercised those very strongly. The third point, having got the strategy and the people aspects uh, largely dealt with, was to fix the balance sheet so that we could actually grow. And the first thing in that was to adopt very strong fiscal disciplines on P&L, on cash flow, and very strong approach to investment uh, a thesis. Profit accountability, very importantly, is anchored right at the individual business unit level. So you cannot control, uh, I don't think, a lot of the real activities uh, in a head office and we don't try to do that. Uh, we divested non-core assets and businesses and we also introduced a new investor. 50% uh, of the company was sold to a US um, equity company to recapitalise the company and the balance sheet for growth. And importantly, we introduced a new lender group at the same time. These, the new lender group, uh, and they've been with us ever since, believed in the company and they strongly support the company and we're very grateful for that. All of those steps were executed by the end of 2011 and since then we've been embarking on our actual exportation of how we can take the company forward. So we are a farming, packing and marketing operation. We are geographically very diverse. We have almost 50 farms around the country in all six states and we've also got a substantial blueberry operation in Morocco. Importantly, as part of our investment thesis, none of our categories will ever become dominant. Uh, we're very much uh, managed around a risk model and that model has geographic diversity at its centre. And the other thing at the centre is we insist on having a range of categories, not too broad, but a range of categories where none will become dominant so that we are not overly exposed to any particular risk. 
Now, I'm quickly going to go through uh, our four major categories. First of all, mushrooms. We are number one market share with about 40% of the mushroom um, market, 26,000 tonnes per annum. We've got an integrated spawn, composting and, and uh, growing operation. We're at all states. We're the only national operator. 52-week production. And you'll see some recurring themes in our thesis here. Protected cropping. Mushrooms are the ultimate uh, protected cropper. Uh, they don't even need sunlight for photosynthesis. So it's very much a factory style production. And superior IP, but only in one area, in brown mushrooms, where we do have a, a very distinctive advantage. In terms of innovation, I've got to be quick here, so I can't go into detail, but innovation in mushrooms, very much around developing new products, very much at the forefront of pre-packaging. We have about 38 SKUs, which we sell through the retail channel. And a lot of those have been developed and will be continued to be developed in, in the recent years. And we are right at the forefront globally in post-harvest quality optimisation, with mushrooms being extremely perishable. Berries, which is a topic which people like to talk about these days. We like to talk about berries all the time. Um, we have number one market share in blueberries and raspberries. We're easily the largest grower. We grow about 45% of Australia's blueberry crop and 70% of the rapidly developing raspberry crop. About 28 million blueberry punnets to put into context, about 16 million raspberry uh, punnets from our own farms. And separately, we own half of a joint venture in Australia called Driscoll's Australia, and that's the overall berry market leader across the whole berry category. And we'll achieve 52-week production this year from a range of geographies and new varieties and substrate, which is a form of hydroponics uh, growing in four different production areas. And importantly, we've gone to very much protected cropping. Again, 50% of our berries are now grown under protected cropping, permanent tunnels and largely hydroponics. Our innovation here is very much around varieties, about IP, either our own or, or other people's, and hydroponic production is really leading the charge. We've taken yields, for example, in raspberries from two tonnes a hectare to 18 tonnes a hectare by virtue of that, and we're doing a lot of further work on yield optimisation. Uh, we have eight growth projects in play at the moment with berries, which will be concluded over the next two years. And we've now developed some international operations in uh, other markets. Glasshouse tomatoes, number one market share again in our own and contracted uh, high-tech glasshouse production, only play in the high-tech area, which is truss, snacking and cocktail. On our own glasshouses, uh, 11,000 tonnes per annum, obviously 52-week production, again very high focus on protected cropping. And in the snacking area only, we have uh, exclusive IP, which is marketed now through the various retailers. And um, we are constructing a new 10 hectare glass house at Gyra to supplement our existing capacity. Our innovation here is really about integrated pest management, where we're hopeful to <coughs> take all chemicals out of that glass house within a, a two year period, and varietal evaluation and hydroponics. And last but not least, citrus. Um, we again are the largest citrus grower in the country, about 76,000 tonnes off our 2,000 hectares of bearing citrus. Uh, eight months of production, a range of uh, citrus crops. And unlike the average, we export 55% of our crops, so we're dominantly an export uh, operator, and Japan's our largest market by a considerable margin. And innovation here is we have our own, innova in sorry, our own irrigation company uh, to minimise uh, water usage. We've cut our water usage in the Renmark region down by 60%. Uh, in the last seven years, and we, we've done this through a lot of uh, high-tech trickle irrigation and remote uh, sensing. Moving fairly quickly here, very important to our business model and to the success of the company is uh, IP. Just talking about the varietal IP, Costa actually <coughs> has world-leading genetics in blueberries, which uh, is underpinning our local production, and also through the Americas now, Driscoll's are growing our varieties, so they're the largest planted proprietary varieties now in the Americas, Mexico and South America, and we're growing them in Morocco. Critically important to us and marketed under the Driscoll label. And since we formed the JV, we've had access to and we've exploited mightily to grow a very substantial volume of raspberries and more likely strawberries and blackberries, also marketed under the Driscoll label. Syngenta, a very important part of our network, and here we have exclusive development where we develop over an 18-month period their varieties in Australia for Australian conditions and our landmark um, snacking variety we actually introduced uh, with the Coles organisation, a new category called snacking. And um, Perino is still the flagship 
uh, of that. And we've also now launched Golden Perino and there's a couple of other uh, companion varieties which are in the market as well. And in mushrooms, uh, tied very much to Amosil, which is the molecular breeding company of Monterey Mushrooms to provide the base of our mushroom material. So IP, a fundamental part, protected cropping, a fundamental part, and large market share and scale, very important to our model. The value proposition to the retail channel, which is uh, the major channel by a long margin in Australia, very important, we see as being large scale, low cost, uh, representing a high relative market share in the industry. Uh, a unique IP portfolio where we're able to develop that. Consumer recognised brands where we're able to do that. Very importantly, by a range of geographies and varieties and different agronomic practices to achieve 52 week supply. <coughs> Obviously important to the retail and <coughs> the consumer is to have product quality and consistency. A lot of work's done on that. And we have spent millions on developing world class post harvest uh, capability across our repertoire and we have obviously the production certification and protocols uh, which uh, you'd expect in a, in a company of our scale. And that's some of our product range uh, at the bottom. Talk about protected cropping and this, the photographs there on the left, um, that's one of our most recent uh, raspberry plantings, 15 hectares near Devonport, uh, just finished planting about eight months ago. That's all permanent tunnels uh, of raspberries. In the centre photograph, one of our glass houses uh, in the, on the New England Tableland, and on the right, one of our thousands of, um, of uh, growing rooms around our network of mushroom farms, and that's uh, obviously very much protected cropping. We go back to when we started our new uh, business model, 30% of our EBITDA was earned from the protected cropping mode. If we look at where we are today, it's 75% this year. So I'm not exaggerating when I say how important protected cropping is to our company and we think that's a real trend which uh, will be evident in some parts of the industry going forward. I'm going to finish on um, our most important slide which is managing agricultural risk. Uh, I think any agricultural company if it doesn't have a huge focus on managing and reducing agricultural risk is really going to uh, suffer in the future. And our approach uh, is very much on, on four facets. One is to diversify the company as much as we can in terms of geography. And you saw from our map of Australia, we are <coughs> very diverse in terms of range. We've got uh, no single category, more than 25% of our sales. We're in six states. We've got uh, close to 50 farms. Uh, very importantly, secondly, protected cropping, where as I just said, 75% of our earnings now come from uh, one form or other of protected cropping. And as climate change continues to challenge our industry in the unprotected area, we're moving more and more to that. Uh, the third leg is the IP and uh, technology know-how, very much focused on varieties uh, and very strong in berries and tomatoes and somewhat in, in mushrooms. And also in, <coughs> in a lot of the practices that we do, we spend a lot of money on R&D a year and we tap into other people's money in terms of our overseas affiliates to exploit that. And the fourth leg is year-round supply. <coughs> Not easy with a lot of our products getting 52-week supply and that's been done by a variety of agronomic practices, changes in uh, production techniques, uh, new varieties and a range of geographies. That removes seasonality, it gives us consumer reach, our retail customers really demand 52 weeks and it does wonders for smoothing out our cash flow. So if I'll just conclude on, on the basis of saying risk management is front and centre of our strategy. So, thank you.